Hey everybody, Michael Noland here. You know, I was thinking as a follow-up to my video on Led Zeppelin, what I'd do tonight is discuss some of the various aspects that truly separated this band from its peers. You know, I've dedicated over 15 videos discussing the Beatles and what really separated them from their peers. And tonight, that's pretty much what I wanna do in one go with Led Zeppelin. And like I've talked about, the Beatle machine, not just the band, but those around the band that helped them achieve what they did in recording holds true with Led Zeppelin, perhaps to a lesser degree, because it was, after all, a tighter unit. Of course, you can't even begin to talk about Led Zeppelin unless you start off with Jimmy Page. Now, at the point that Jimmy Page was putting this band together, he was still really just trying to find replacement members for the band, the New Yardbirds. You see, the Yardbirds had recently broken up, leaving only him and Chris, the bass player, behind. Now, the original plan was for Chris to continue to play bass and, of course, Jimmy to play lead guitar, and they needed to find replacement members. But before they could even get further in replacing members of the band, Chris lost interest. Now, it was around this time that John Paul Jones, who was spending far too much time at home, evidently, according to his wife, had heard through the grapevine that Jimmy was starting another band, and he heard that Chris was dropping out. Now, you have to realize here, John Paul Jones goes way back with Jimmy Page at this point in their career. You know, after all, it was Jimmy Page, John Paul Jones, and two other musicians that were pretty much responsible for being on more English records than the Beatles themselves. By the time Jimmy Page was 19, he was a seasoned session player. So when in 1968, Jimmy Page and John Paul Jones decided to hook up, this future band was assured of two of the best players that any band could possibly hope for. Now, it's around this time that Jimmy let it slip. He's looking for a new lead vocalist. Now, Jimmy Page was interested in several vocalists at this time, but they were unavailable, although interested, one giving him the name of one Robert Plant. Now, it's at this point that Jimmy goes and sees Robert perform. He likes what he hears. He invites him over. They discuss their interests. They find out they have the very same record collection, pretty much. Now, it's interesting with the Beatles. Ringo was once quoted as saying that if you looked at the Beatles' record collections, their individual record collections, they were almost a carbon copy of each other. And you know, I think this is important when you're creating a band. It's important that the band members have solid backgrounds and similar tastes so the sound of the band can naturally evolve. Well, with Robert Plant on board, of course, Robert is the one who introduces Jimmy to Mr. John Bonham. Now, all of the members of Led Zeppelin over the years have said those very first sessions that they got together, there was just a connection. They just seem to have the ability to follow each other. And the importance of this cannot be understated. Now that leads me to an interesting point here. You see, John Bonham, his style is that he played more with the guitar player than he did with, say, the bass player. A common approach in most bands is to nail the bass player and the drummer together. They are the rhythm section. They are the heartbeat of the band. But here between John Bonham and Jimmy Page, we see an interplay that you rarely see between a guitarist and a drummer. Now, one thing I did want to bring up here is I've been watching some old Led Zeppelin footage of them performing as well as their final performance with Jason Bonham as their drummer. In the older footage, you see John Paul Jones playing over what Jimmy Page and John Bonham are playing. Much like how we've discussed in past videos how Paul McCartney would lay his bass over later recordings with the Beatles, John Paul Jones seems to be able to do live. Now, don't get me wrong, I think Jason Bonham is a wonderful drummer, but he's not his dad, and the interplay between him and Jimmy Page is not the same. 
And if you notice in those performances, John Paul Jones plays a much more percussive bass. He glues in to the drums in this case. And if there is a difference in sound between true Led Zeppelin, John Bonham Led Zeppelin, and the Led Zeppelin that plays with his son, it is this sound difference that I hear. Now, John Paul Jones wasn't just good at doing this live. He is also, in my opinion, Led Zeppelin's secret weapon. He's like a shortstop on a baseball team. He has to run a little, he has to catch, he's gotta be able to throw, and he's also gotta be able to run a runner down. And really, isn't that his part in Led Zeppelin? Of course, as a musician who plays several instruments, this came in handy. And of course, his ability to orchestrate behind what Jimmy Page and Robert Plant wrote was amazing. In fact, himself, quite the composer, all on his own. Now you couple that with the power of Robert Plant's voice, his ability to not only be able to sing good, hard rock, but to soften his voice and really add emotion to some of the softer ballads of Led Zeppelin only is icing on the cake. And the band without a real lyricist at the point, it was Robert Plant that kinda took up the mantle in that regard. And of course, when Robert Plant and Jimmy Page wrote, we got some great songs. Now the band was also fortunate because they would need a producer. Well, guess who was paying attention when he was a session player throughout those years? Jimmy Page. He was watching how they treated the musicians in the studio, and he was taking careful notes on exactly how they achieved the sounds that they finally produced on a particular record. Of course, with his right-hand engineer, as well as a manager who truly cared for the welfare of the band, Led Zeppelin was set to succeed. So in the final analysis, Led Zeppelin wasn't just a band or a group of musicians that got together and said, hey, let's make a band. Almost at the outset, you can see that Page had a vision. That vision at first was still evolving, no doubt. But as Jimmy Page and Robert Plant continued to write together and mature together as writers, there was no stopping this band. They were destined to rule the world. Okay, so that covers most of what I wanted to cover tonight. What I wanted to do is lay us a foundation for future videos as we discuss Led Zeppelin. You know, if you enjoy this kind of content, of course, we encourage everyone to give us a thumbs up. That helps the YouTube algorithm better recognize us, and that's good for the channel, of course. And of course, if you like what you see, consider subscribing to the tribe. All you have to do is hit that subscribe to the tribe button, then hit that top bell notification, and of course, you'll be notified of all future videos. Okay guys, so it's the end of the shoot. I'm about ready to put this stuff away, but I did want to go ahead and give a shout out to three new subscribers. Now one, I'm not sure if this is how you pronounce your name, and if I got it wrong, please forgive me, but I believe it's Kulad Aji, and of course, Lewis Multimedia, and last but not least, Michael Leite, or Leite, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, Michael, but all three of you, welcome to the tribe. Now it's interesting to shoot this last little bit. Of course, I bring shift screen up, and I found out we're at 208 subscribers now. So that means we've gotten a couple of subscribers that are at least private channels and therefore it doesn't come across our desk or that as sometimes happens, I'll get an increase in subscribership, but it'll be a couple of hours before that subscriber's name comes across. So if you've joined the tribe and I haven't mentioned you, be patient and I'll do so as soon as your name or your channel comes across. This is The Bottom Line. I'm Michael Noland, and we'll see you in the next video.